Pere and Labas. We are back in Baltic Film Competition at 26th Black Knights Film Festival. I'm Edvinas, one of the programmers here, and I'm curating a Baltic Film Competition. And today we, uh, we will discuss a uh, Lithuanian film in co-production with France, uh, Remember to Blink. It's an international premiere. Uh, film arrives uh, to Tallinn immediately uh, after world premiere in Warsaw uh, Film Festival. Austria Urbaita together with us. Uh, and, and for yeah. her, it's a, a feature film debut. Yeah. You started to stay from uh, two shorts, yeah. and then you, uh, you wrote a, uh, a script to uh, remember to blink. And uh, you tackle very important issues, very uh, painful issues of adoption in a, a foreign country. Could you el elaborate on that your decision to, to investigate uh, uh, this topic? Mm, I think it started with me uh, working at the orphanage as a theater teacher, like volunteering there and meeting the kids there. Um, and uh, one thing at first that inspired me was how different those kids were from anything I felt I knew about children. And I've been working with children mm -hmm. since I was 13 myself in uh, child children's like festivals and so on. Um, and these kids were felt like grown ups somewhere where you expect them to be little and innocent. And then they would be sort of behaving smaller than they are based on their age in the other hand. So they felt for me like a sort of reverse. And many of those kids were um, had families in Italy mm. where they, would, they were planning to adopt them and they would be flying there for the summer and coming back and they would be sharing their stories, sharing stories of their friends who were already adopted there. Um, so I got a lot of inspiration from those mm. kids and then I did, do, drew, sort of dove into that uh, topic and I talked to some lawyers who were working for kind of families and the translator and um, yeah and I just got my inspiration from all those people. Yeah one of my close friends in Lithuania, Elina, uh, she works in this uh, field uh -huh. is with adoption but she works with only in Lithuania and I heard so painful and heartbreaking stories of uh, even from kids' perspective and parents' perspective. So I kind of was prepared for your film already uh -huh. uh, getting with information with, uh, with real stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And where, uh, how did you research this? Is it in your film any uh, uh, real facts or what if it, it, it could have been, it, it happened in reality? In <laughs> Yeah, I would say it's a collection of real stories mm -hmm. um, and then they just were mixed in a way to be a one complete uh, storyline but uh, some of the dialogues are uh, just stolen from the kids mm -hmm. some uh, you know it's like exactly how they meet each other and uh, the way uh, like we ask uh, you know where do you work and what do you study and they like my parent died then mm -hmm. and my mother died at that time and she was very sad and they talk about it so easily and um, it's heartbreaking and it's hard to chew on um so so i don't want to spoil mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. but yeah but there's many uh, many scenes something i've witnessed because I have to say I've spent a lot of time and with families that have adopted and meeting kids in the orphanage and meeting kids coming to the casting mm -hmm. even. And that also gave me um, perspective. I had some kids coming to casting who had adoptive siblings. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, some stories are heard of, mm -hmm. some stories are witnessed. Um, some were created and then I went mm -hmm. to the lawyers or to psychologists mm -hmm. or, you know, the social workers and asked, is there any record of that actually happening? Mm -hmm. Could it be possible? And I've mm -hmm. got like positive answer. Uh, possibly yes. that's why I remember to blink looks and sounds very authentic, very yeah. truthful. B but action of your, of your film uh, takes place somewhere in France, but it could have been in any other country. And yeah. you bring Lithuanian 
uh, yeah. kids for adoption uh, with French couple. Yeah. And uh, if I remember correctly, kids you chose where they had no experience in acting. No, yeah. no. Why, First time. why you decided uh, 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 like that? Uh, what, why those children or when? Yeah, why you decided to cast unexperienced uh, children in such yeah. re really hard roles? Because what mm. is an experienced mm. child in acting? Mm. I'm not mm. sure. Mm. One thing that I've uh, sort of practiced mm -hmm. through with the ki when I was working with the kids in the orphanage, we were uh, playing with improvisation and learning to respect each other through um, playing etudes of our real emotions and just being there in the moment, not making spectacles mm -hmm. or anything. That was their way of releasing what's inside them. So I witnessed for two years how a kid can um, progress in acting, you know, by experiencing what improvisation is so I just thought I need to find someone who could be had the traits of the you know overly active monkey Carolina mm. and the very uh, suppressed um, shy Ritis and then the ones that have enough within them to take the information and are not afraid to experience with it because they were not just put in the scene and we had a long process of preparation I've never given them a script. Mm -hmm. They wrote, um, we had, there were three stages, I think, of how we worked. Uh, first one was me telling them just the storylines of them, and they had notebooks. And uh, Inessa, who was Carolina, she was writing down what happens to her and what she will say. And Ritis was just drawing. Mm -hmm. And I would never understand the drawings. There would be a scene number and a drawing. But if you ask him, and scene 26, what is this drawing? It says fish scales with saliva. Mm. And that means this drawing that that's the line he's going to say uh -huh. when Gabriel is saying a sword. So they wrote their own scripts. Mm. It was very important that they know th what how their relationship changes with Gabriel and uh, Jacqueline during the script mm. because we couldn't shoot in order. Mm -hmm. And after they understood, sort of we went through the story. Uh, they're very intelligent children. Mm -hmm. um, after that, then we progressed to improvisations, just playing in whatever, just you're reading a book and there's a storm behind the window and just being mm -hmm. in those. And then we progressed into going into the scenes. I let them improvise on the topic of the scene. And then with me directing from a side and the villa directing from inside, we would sort of shape them in what the scene should be. Mm -hmm. And then they would still give their own lines mm -hmm. in this way. You would never have to, you know, they always can speak from how they speak then. And mm -hmm. then they, well, that's why they are so natural, I think. And then you surrounded them by true professionals. Yeah. yeah. Uh, remember to blink in m uh, major uh, dialogues are in French. Yeah. Uh, you said it's 60 40 uh, yeah. French, Lithuanian, which means you had to find French actors. Uh, yeah. And Azulai, uh, she has big experience in theater. And actually, she arrives to Tallinn for premiere yeah. just for this event from uh, in between of her performances. Yeah, yeah, yeah just so for the night. We are very proud of yeah, her. We will talk with her live. But how did you find her and how you included uh, uh, in Remember to Blink and especially how we bonded with uh, kids? Um. Oh, that's so many questions at yeah. once. <laughs> but uh, uh, with Anne, actually, I was not looking for her especially. Mm. I was wanting a character that would be more like a grandmother mm -hmm. to have a bigger difference from a mother side. But something I, I was getting like casting suggestions from France and there were many great actresses from Belgium and France that, uh, you know, I really loved. But then there just was something in the way she plays um, the mic, the micro emotion that she has, was perfect for the neurosis of Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. I think I fell in love, and I changed the script a bit based, you know, on on her age also, because now she's younger. Um, um, yes, and I consider her, you know, a part of uh, writing the story because mm -hmm. she she was a great influence, and with the and with the kids. There was a bit of distance, and I think that's great. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. And from Lithuania, you bring the Vilio Kundratete, yeah. we saw her in different roles, also co commercial Lithuanian films, mm -hmm. unconventional decision, but I think it's uh, uh, very rightful. Yeah. And I heard what the uh, uh, Vilio made some commitments to you, and she learned uh, French, French language. Yeah, mm -hmm. just for the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was not a very easy thing to do, and mm. it's. I think I'm very, very proud of mm. the villa because mm. she's not only playing in a language that's mm. not hers, not mm. native, or not something she knew before, mm. or practiced in real life, and also she has, in a way, have to influence and direct children from mm. within. You cannot just let them go, anyways. They have, you know, she she would always be. Wondering, so you have to play with kids and with uh, another language at the same time. So I think she may, did a like splendid job. It's a very very hard task she did. I'm very very proud. And cinematographer Julius Sijunas follows you from previous short yeah. film. Probably this is a strong collaboration between you and Julius. Yeah. And film looks uh, gorgeous. You don't know where you are. Uh, and where did you shot the film? Where did you fi find these locations? Um, uh, the main location, so. Initially, in the mm. beginning, I wanted to, the story had to be based in France mm. just for it to work. Um, uh, but we didn't get enough funds to shoot there. So I, then I decided to find a place that could be somewhere, nowhere and everywhere at the same time. We found the house in uh, Lithuania, and um, I fell in love with it. I mm -hmm. came there, and I thought, okay, I could make this completely closed from any other perspective, from other people, from other world, and then they would just be trapped within their own drama, unable to look from a side and, mm -hmm. and see themselves. That's the sort of the point of the film, that they don't stop to understand what they're judging wrong, because they're just in themselves because there's no way to go out, you know. Um, so then we went to Italy and shot some material there that could connect, um, you know, in Florence, Tuscany, then you have the nature very um, similar, so we were able to match that and create a place that you are not sure where it is, but that's not the main point. <laughs> Thank you, Ostea. I hope you will discover remember to blink in Baltic film competition. Uh, to me, this film uh, doesn't even look as Lithuanian. It's probably the Frenchiest Lithuanian film I, ha I, I had able to, to watch. And it's a uh, truly uh, emotional one, with very good performances. And I think Lithuanian actress Dovilla, uh, she makes a very uh, uh, high jump with this role, and I, I, I just uh, hope that she, she will get uh, necessary and deserved support from you. Thank you very much uh, uh, for listening us in a Baltic film competition. <laughs>